Ah, the command line interface, a program that accepts text input to execute operating system functions. It used to be the only way we could interact with computers back in the day, the 1960s. And in the 1970s and 1980s, command line input was commonly used by Unix systems and PC systems like MS-DOS and Apple-DOS. Today, however, we've lost our way. With GUIs or graphical user interfaces, most users never use the command line, except for us, the chosen ones. The software developers and system administrators of the world. We use the CLI to configure computers, install software, and access features that are not available in the graphical interface. But not only that, we have a secret. It increases productivity. It's one of those things where you put in time on the front end to learn, but once you do, you will get that time back tenfold. So in this video, I want to share the most prevalent command line tools used today. My name is Forrest Knight. I make content like this, so subscribe and hit the bell if you like it. And recently, we just hit 400,000 subscribers. So to all of y'all, thank you. Let's start off with the shell. It is the first thing you see when opening a terminal, but it is not the same as a terminal. The terminal itself is actually a terminal emulator, a program that opens a window and lets you interact with the shell. That would be your GNOME terminal, Windows terminal, Xterm, Alacrity, terminal, but the shell in Linux, we usually use the word shell to refer to the main command line interface on which we execute programs called commands. This would be your bash, C shell, Z shell, corn shell, born shell, bash, which you may have heard of. It's actually the GNU born again shell, hence the B-A-S-H, or even Windows PowerShell. Developers, 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 developers. And you may have noticed I use the same image for Xterm and Bash. That is because Xterm is the window that is serving you Bash. Or here you can see that console is actually the terminal emulator. So this window that is serving you the Z shell. Terminal emulator allows you to access the shell. The shell allows you to access the kernel. So when you type in LS, the shell executes the LS command. The shell can also execute other programs, including applications, scripts, and user programs. With one of those programs, being our next tool, the text editor, which allows you to, well, edit text using the command line interface. And that's a typical text file or code, readmes, get commit messages. This would be your V or Vim, V improved, NeoVim, which is a fork of Vim, GNU Nano, Emacs, Gedit, and so on. Some are just basic text editors like Nano, whereas developers typically use more customizable and extensive editors like Vim. Not because they like it more, but because they can't figure out how to exit. Now, some of these command line tools come default on many systems, but many of them you'll have to install yourself. That's where our next tool comes into play, the package manager. Package managers ease the process of installing software. You can think of it as an app store for the command line even before app stores were ever a thing. This would be your APT, the default for Ubuntu, your DPKG, Debian package, Pac-Man, default for Arch Linux, Homebrew, commonly used on Mac OS, or you may be more familiar with some application level package managers like Yarn or NPM. A package manager allows you to install, configure, upgrade, audit, or remove software packages and dependencies, and in the context of the former list, from your operating system. In the context of the latter list, from your application. You absolutely need a package manager. But package manager, that name is not as cool as our next tool on the list, Fuzzy Finder. <laughs> also known as its less cool name, Interactive Unix Filter. With FZV being the most popular, most used, and, and most up-to-date Fuzzy Finder by far. It can be used with any list, files, command history, processes, host names, bookmarks, lines of code, git commits, and so on. It's effectively file search, but for everything using their Fuzzy Finder algorithm. So if you know the type of file or word in a file name or a file path or commit message or code or whatever, you just run the Fuzzy Finder command and start typing. It searches system-wide or project-wide, you can specify, and the algorithm will filter out anything that doesn't match. You can kind of think of it as grep, but better and in real time. Fuzzy Finders are incredibly convenient and save you a lot of time. But if you want to be a super hacker man like you see in the movies with terminals all over your screen, well, you need a multiplexer. Or on a serious note, for real world use, the limitation of being able to only keep one application open at any given time can be pretty annoying. Sometimes you want multiple shell sessions, cell sessions, that's a hard word to say. Sometimes you want multiple shell sessions open. <laughs> Oh my gosh, running, not open, running. <laughs> or display more than one application in a single terminal. Shell sessions, shell set. You say that three times fast, I'll give you an award. Anyway, that's where something like Tmux or Byobu or GNU screens comes into play. So within the same window, you can have multiple panes or screens where you can run several applications at the same time in the same window. And also do something like observe their output in real time. For example, when coding, you may want to edit 
the code, execute it, fix the mistakes, and execute again. And if you're looking for a bug, you can list logs in a real time, send a request to a server. So you're looking at the logs as it happens. So multiplexer, hacker man. If you're new to the command line, or you're like me and have trouble remembering things, especially when it comes to commands, but not just commands, but like command arguments, then you'll want to install TLDR. It is such a nice tool. Basically, in their own words, they aim to be a simple, more approachable complement to traditional man pages, which stands for manual pages, like manual, like a user manual. TLDR is a community maintained help pages for command line tools. So if you can't recall arguments for a certain command, just type it in and there you go. Another tool that just makes your life easier inside that command line. I know there are many, 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 many more command line tools out there, but I wanted to go over the basics and my favorites. For you, which would be the first command line tool that you would recommend to a friend? I got a lot of good feedback on my VS Code setup video about y'all's VS Code setup and I would like to do the same here. How is your command line set up? What tools do you use? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments section. I really hope you gained some value from this video. Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already. I'd love for you to join this coding community. And until next time, which will be the developer portfolio tutorial, y'all have a good one.